Hi, everyone. We're back, and this time with Nico Grenier, who is our in-house hacker, um, all things API and fun integration hacks. That is the go-to guy. What he's going to walk us through is how you can connect Typeform to different services and basically create really, really cool stuff. Nico, uh, the floor is all yours. Uh, hi, everybody. Really happy to be here. Um, and thank you, Vakis, for the introduction. And thank you for having me here. Um, please let me know if you don't see the, the slides in, uh, in full. Uh, we'll get through this. I'm trying to see if we can be innovative and do with uh, the different difficulties we had with Spine earlier today. The, the first thing I have really to do uh, to all of you is to thank you, because right now, in this exact minute, in five minutes, there's probably a big announcement coming up. And we don't know what they're going to announce, but we know that anytime they do something, the whole world stops and everybody's watching because they just release some stuff and tell you, buy, buy, buy. Well, welcome to a talk where we're not going to talk about buying anything, uh, but we're going to talk more about stories, developers, and how uh, people can build meaningful interactions. I love apples, uh, but in the meantime, I really love avocados. Uh, this is definitely the fruit of my generation. And in the team at Typeform, I'm a developer advocate. And some folks call this a developer advocado. So this is why I'm really into advocado as well. The whole purpose of a developer advocate in the team is to be the voice of developers that are outside of Typeform uh, to the product team. So uh, whatever you need as a developer, whatever you need uh, for you to build on top of Typeform, I will be the voice inside and like pushing your agenda, uh, making sure that we have an open platform. And also uh, being the advocate. So every time we build something uh, that is for developers, making sure that we have the right documentation, making sure we have the right SDKs, and everything you need to really be successful on our platform. If you're not familiar yet with uh, what we offer, um, I will say your pretty familiar uh, way of thinking about developers is thinking that they are assembling Legos. And if you uh, have seen the talk this morning from Martin, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, we love Legos, and we do a lot of things with Legos. Personally, if I didn't have Legos during this confinement and the shelter in place that we've been through, uh, I probably wouldn't have survived. During this time of confinement, I built the ISS, so the space station that's up there, the Empire State Building, uh, and I have so many other boxes that I have to build. So um, this is my fun as building Legos, but as developers, this is exactly what we do as well, like assembling things together. Um, and this is uh, a job that we all like to do. In terms of Typeform, uh, we provide a different type of experiences and different type of blocks, uh, uh, things you can assemble. The first one that you may have in mind and the first one that you can think about is around the responses, meaning that uh, you use Typeform to retrieve all the data. You uh, use Typeform to ask questions. And you're really interested to crunch this data, export it into other systems. Um, and so for this, you may use the response API. If you use the response API, it's really helpful to retrieve responses in batches. Tell me the last responses that we got in the last day. Tell me the last responses we get in a week. Uh, search for something specific into responses. So something that will be happening on a regular basis. If you're more interested by something that's happening in real time uh, that will trigger some actions, you might be more interested by webhook. The idea here is that on each form, we will notify you every time a new submission arrives. Like this, you know exactly, uh, and you can react uh, in real time. We will send you all the answers that were filled into this form, so you can retrieve those things and uh, take an action. Sending an SMS, sending an email, uh, adding them to your database. This is actually what we did for this event. When you sign up for the type form on the Meaningful website, uh, we call the Pine API, the tool that we use for the event management, from the form that you filled using a webhook. So every time you were doing this, at the instant you were filling the type form, you received an invitation to join the Pine tool. And then uh, we also have APIs and functionalities to help you create and manipulate forms. So this is something that well, people might not be aware of, but we have plenty of APIs to, that let you modify the form, create forms on the fly. Um, and hopefully today I will, I will show you some of those stuff. Finally, uh, for those of you that are interested to embed their type form into their different experiences on the website on mobile app, we also have an embed SDK that lets you really customize your experience wherever you need to have your type form. So we are a developer-enabled tool. 
and we're definitely developer ready. So if you have any question about the, the APIs, the SDKs that are available, I really encourage you to go on developer.typeform.com. But if you like Lego like me, uh, the fun thing about Lego is not really following the plan, it's really more about telling stories and everybody uh, getting together and come up with the different stories. So in this presentation, I would like to tell you two different stories and two things that I've done uh, recently with uh, the Typeform platform. The first one is really a story of what's going on right now in the world, where uh, we are in a world of pandemic, a lot of things are happening, but it's also a world of possibilities. Uh, there are a lot of things going on now, uh, and we can all help at our own level. We saw examples this morning with the Mask Match project, uh, with uh, the Smile family in, uh, in France uh, that were selling fruits on the market. Well, for me, I decided a couple of weeks ago to help out at a different level. Um, after the first confinement in France, um, during the summer, everything reopened. Um, all the restaurants reopened. Everybody were going back to quite a normal life. And as uh, the day were progressing, as uh, the things and the people were having more fun, we saw the pandemic increase. And so suddenly the health agencies decided to come up with a stricter plan. And this plan at this time was trying to force the restaurants, the bars, and every every little place that was actually welcoming public uh, to have a, a book. And in this book, they will ask you to uh, leave your details, so such as your first name, last name, and a, con a way to contact you. Is that a phone number? Is that an email? The idea here is that if someone was uh, getting infected and was at the restaurant at the same time, it was easy for the health agencies to just contact those people. So it was uh, an easy way to do contact tracing, which is the, an important part to fight the, the pandemic and the spread of the virus. But with this, uh, they, the government basically said, OK, starting Monday, you will have to use this system. But they didn't really provide a solution. You just say, well, you will do it on your own. And uh, the the owners of restaurants were left on their own, and they, what they did was basically getting a book and let everybody sign in every time they were uh, arriving at the restaurant. And that exposed to two things. Uh, well, first, people are sharing the same pen, and they are interacting with the same book. And also, it doesn't really follow the rules around privacy and data uh, privacy. So uh, maybe there was a solution for digital here. And so that's why I thought that maybe as we are offering a data uh, collection tool uh, with Typeform, and it's an experience that works great on mobile, uh, we can create a form that will uh, help the restaurant owners to collect easily those details in a seamless way and for each individual person, not specifically just for a group. And then people will do this when they arrive and uh, they can enjoy their meal. I also wanted to provide a solution where it was plug and play. We'll provide them with the the flyers that they have to print and uh, show in the in the restaurants. This is an example. I'm not really good at design, but it has everything that you need as uh, a patron. You know what is it for. You know what how long your data are going to be collected, and you know what is the action. You pull up your phone, you scan this QR code, and uh, you can register your data. I also the constraint for this project. I didn't want our uh, restaurant owners to create a type form account. It's probably not good for the business, but I really wanted a seamless experience for them, so they don't have to uh, think about how much they're going to pay. They don't have to think uh, about their credentials. Uh, something really simple. And so the best way to do this was really to start with a type form and asking them uh, what was their restaurant, what was their business, uh, how it was called, do they have a logo, uh, and try to personalize this experience. Then when I was generating the form. This is the idea. From a form, I will generate way more forms. And um, if we deep dive into deep dive into how it works, uh, I use and connected different things. On the type form front, I use first the webhook. So whenever a restaurant owner fills up this first form, I'll get a notification. We'll extract the data, such as their name, the, uh, the name of the restaurant, the email address of the owner, and if they had a logo. Then I will use the create API to use a template and replace in my template all those values. So now there was a placeholder about restaurant name. It will say, bienvenue chez Tonton, uh, something like this. It uh, sounds like very French uh, restaurants. Uh, and then once I had created this form, it was available on my account. I had now a URL that I could share. This URL can be sent, convert into a QR code, and then use Banner Bear 
to display and create a template with my image. Bannerbird is an API where uh, you set up a template of uh, an image uh, of, uh, of a video, and you have some placeholders. In my case, I was just placing here the QR code. Finally, um, all the stuff that I had to do was to just send them an email uh, saying that everything went correctly, that we have created the form, that they have now leaflet that they can print, and they had a third uh, link if they wanted to access the data. This is the only interaction they will have, and this is the only thing that they have to store. They don't have to think about a password. They don't have to think about anything else. For this, I use Courier, which lets me bring uh, and build awesome notification. Uh, that looks great. I don't, I'm not a designer, but I'm pretty happy about the result here. And to glue all the things together, I use a system called Integromat. If you're not familiar with Integromat, it's a way to build workflows. And the best thing about this, it's not consuming any code. Everything is point and click and connect things together. So I'm starting to build a very complex workflow without having to code anything. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, especially for me as a developer, every time I can save time, uh, <laughs> I like this. Um, so this is just an example of the simple workflow that creates a type form from the first type form response. But then I have two other workflows like this, the one that is sending a notification, the one that is retrieving the data, and one that runs every night to deal with the data that has been collected for more than 14 days. On this small project, um, we don't have a lot of users. We don't have users at all. Uh, but it was a good proof of concept on how things could be connected and how you can use the power of APIs uh, to go a bit beyond than just moving data from one place to another place. So I will I really encourage you to imagine all the different projects you can build, uh, leveraging all those different APIs, uh, all of those different uh, connectors. Next, I would like to tell you a story um, that's about to uh, to happen. It's a it's a story about Christmas and. Um, we're right in the season. You know you're starting to hear Mario Carre. Uh, you know that uh, Thanksgiving is something in the US, but everywhere else, uh, Christmas is, is around the corner. Um, and so more Christmas songs when you go shopping. But this is not really a story about Christmas. It's more a story about Reyes, Reyes, uh, the kings, uh, because this story happened in Spain. And in Spain, they don't really celebrate Christmas the same way other countries may celebrate it. They celebrate more the kings. And this is happening on January 6th. Uh, so it's a bit later, but the principle is really the same. You gather as a family, you get some gift, kids are happy, lots of food, uh, food coma, poisoning, uh, you, uh, you, you can't go to work the next day. Uh, you have to you know, wait the holiday season, basically. This happens everywhere. And this is not a story about me, actually. This is more a story about me helping the elves, because yeah, you know, I don't make gifts. The elves are helping Santa Claus or the kings to deliver all the stuff. So if I say, I, I'm really sorry, this is really not me. Uh, it's the elf that are building this whole thing. I was just here to, to help them out. So for the last few years uh, in my family with, with my wife, we've tried to get experiences more than physical gifts uh, because experiences are creating a stronger connection uh, between us and they create last, long lasting memories that we'll never forget. Two years ago, for example, uh, we got to see Muse in concerts. So I don't know if you like Muse. I was not specifically a fan. My wife is a fan, but the show was amazing. And uh, that reminds me actually the, the Muse music I was listening when I was uh, 15 years old. So they're still a pretty good band and it's a memory I will never forget. And uh, the smile of my wife watching them for the first time, definitely something I wouldn't forget. But to deliver this experience, how the elf did it? Well, they did something pretty simple uh, when you go to a concert. You, have a, a contact at Ticketmaster. Uh, I don't know how they do this, uh, how the transaction works between the Santa Claus and Ticketmaster, but they, at the end, they get tickets. They print those, this, those tickets and they put them in an envelope, which is nice, right? They write a name on it and say, this is uh, for her for, for, for the day and it will be under the tree and you'll get your gift. But this is not super fun. Uh, there are ways to make this a bit more spicy, a bit more juicy and a bit more meaningful, a bit more interesting overall, right? Um, so last year, when I gathered with the elf and we thought about ideas uh, on how we can make this whole experience about gifting something like a concert uh, more, more meaningful and more personalized, uh, we came up with the idea that looks like this. Um, so this is the result of what was the box that was under the tree. 
when you're opening up, you find this thing on the side, uh, and you find the details here uh, on a post-it note. Well, yeah, the elves are cheap. They have post-it notes available. That's what they, <laughs> they do. But as you can see, they still don't know how to really write well. So, uh, and they were not giving instruction clearly. Um, so I don't know if you can guess, but it says a puzzle. It says and a sign and that looks like a camera and a phone. Um, so you've been going through this whole conference. I'm sure you already have an understanding through all the things that we've saw uh, what this thing could look like. It was actually a puzzle made of foam, cut out. And uh, when you were done, uh, you will see that there were two colors, the, a darker color and a one that was more like the background color, the white color. At the end, when you were assembling this whole thing together, it was making a QR code. You've seen QR code all day today. Um, and so you can, you can try to scan this because it worked. It still works. Uh, and it will get you to the whole next step of the experience. The next step was uh, now you're on your phone, you're going to get to a tech form, obviously. Uh, this is where the magic happens. And you can expect that, OK, now you've done the puzzle. You will get your gift. Uh, you already solved uh, some of the riddles. This is, this is fine. No, no, no. This is not how it works. It wouldn't go, it wouldn't be too easy. So in this type form, there were three different puzzles that you had to solve. And they are logic puzzles, uh, because if you like escape rooms, if you like puzzles in general, uh, it's always fun to think about logic. And I can rely on the type form features to make sure that the answer that was submitted was the right one, add a score, and uh, if they didn't get a score, then they will have to repeat the whole thing. So a couple of, of different puzzles uh, that I like. One was uh, if you pass the second person in the race, uh, which position are you in the race? Uh, this one has been famous on Twitter about uh, the name of a, of a son, who is the name of a son. Uh, and the last one was one in Spanish, uh, where uh, you dark inside, you're dark outside, uh, your hurt is dark, and um, yeah, who am I? I did, I'll let you think about this. But at the end, you either get a result like this, that's like, oh, you failed. You didn't get any of the responses right. Or you'll get a success screen. I'll tell you, this spent at least an hour all together, the whole family sitting together at the table, trying to solve those riddles. And what had become, what could have been actually, uh, a simple thing in an envelope uh, that was just an experience for yourself has become a family experience. And it was really, not my wife, not her parents, not her sisters that found some of the responses to the riddles. It was the little nephew. He was the most logical person in the room. And thanks to his help, they were able to solve the, the, the problem in less time, but still in an hour long. At the end of this, what was happening, uh, once you submit the type form and say, OK, we have finished everything, you receive a text notification. And in this text notification, there is a link. So this is still not over. There is a lot of things going on now. When you click on the link, what it is is the final reveal. It's um, a wallet file for uh, the Apple Wallet app, and it's a ticket to see the concert. We went to see Kiss in concert uh, for their last in the road show. The last, the last, the promise this one that will be the last show. Uh, but you know, it's Kiss. They will never die. They always do crazy shows. Um, and that concludes the whole experience. Now, if I tell you how it works and how technology helped me save help me help uh, us save uh, Reyes and Christmas. Um, let, me, let me walk you through to this. So we have a type form. Uh, inside the type form, as I said, we have the logic to calculate the score, making sure that all the responses are correct. Uh, I placed many options because I didn't know if they were going to answer in English or in Spanish, uh, if they were going to write the answer as a number or as letters. So I covered my options. And then at the end, when the form is ready, when we, we saw that all the results were correct, what it's going to do is going to send a, a webhook to a server that's hosted on Glitch. Uh, Glitch is a simple way to distribute and create web apps. Uh, and there I have something that is waiting for this webhook, waiting to listen to uh, the payload of it. That's going to tell me, OK, they've scored 100%. Uh, and now you can do the next action. The next action was sending a text. And to this, I use the Twilio API, because Twilio is an awesome service that works globally uh, to send text, SMSs, or even placing some calls. But in this case, I didn't need to make this dynamic. I, could, I knew the phone number of my wife, so I, didn't, I could just hard code this. Uh, but imagine that if you had to do this 
dynamically taking phone numbers from other people. Uh, and I can send the link directly to the, the tickets. Um, and so what it does, when I make an API call from the webhook uh, that was listening to Typeform to Twilio, the result is an actual physical uh, SMS in your, in your inbox. And that was it. That was uh, the end of it. That was December, January last year. And in March, we got to see them in concert. And that was on the 7th of March, which was the day that the shelter in place got in action in San Francisco. So this was probably the last big gathering we did. It was not probably. It is the last big gathering we did in San Francisco. It is an amazing show and is the last concert we've been in the last months. And we're really looking forward to go to more concerts. And hopefully, we'll get to go soon to other stuff. Um, but this was a long-lasting memory that was created just connecting things together, starting from a type form. So really, now what, what I would like to do is to encourage you to go build some stuff. Uh, go explore uh, the ways to connect. Is it for your customers? Is it for your family? Uh, is it to, uh, to engage with your coworkers? Uh, there are many ways to, to build those uh, meaningful type of experience. Also, if you, because Apple is going now with a show, we should say one more thing. Uh, if you're interested uh, to hack on our platform, we have a lot of things coming up. Uh, we are uh, opening new things on the developer uh, ecosystem. So please reach out, and we'll be here to, to help you out. Um, and if you have any question, this is my video ask. It's another QR code, kind of obsessed with QR code at the moment. Uh, I'll be here to answer any questions you may have. Cheers. Nico. <laughs> If anyone's wondering what we're doing all the time, we're basically just following Nico's puzzles, uh, where he leaves little clues on what to build next. Um, amazing. I imagine you have to have a relatively high IQ to uh, just get by in your family. <laughs> no, uh, I'll tell you where uh, there's no IQ involved, but I got the inspiration from a, a Twitter thread that I saw. I got the inspiration. We gather together with the elves. Let's not forget them. But uh, we read together a Twitter thread about a family that was doing this tradition for 10 or 15 years that they were trying to make puzzles for Christmas. Uh, and that happened three days before, uh, before the actual event in Barcelona, where I didn't have any of my devices to create stuff. Um, so there's a whole thing about running around Barcelona and finding solutions. And I'm not really a manual person. So this is why it looks very scrappy. <laughs> Uh, but it was fun, and uh, and I had and it was not living in my place, uh, so I had to keep my wife out of the living room, telling her she's not allowed to enter, and she didn't know what it was for during three days. Um, but this whole thing was building the momentum, and uh, it get everybody excited. Incredible! Um, it's always fun to see the different ways that people use Typeform to solve different jobs. Um, during your time as a developer advocate at Typeform, is there any particular use case that stands out as uh, being one of the more creative ones besides maybe this one? <laughs> no, uh, we, we see people that do, that do a lot of different things. Um, we, we saw people doing, uh, as we saw the onboarding, those things are getting more and more popular. Uh, they used to be, uh, only Superhuman was doing it, and now a lot of more people are doing it. But they all do do it with their own flavor. Uh, this is pretty interesting because then the things are connected in differently. They are connected to other services. Uh, depending on the answers you got, you, you get some different privileges and stuff. So for me, this is exciting on how you connect stuff together. Uh, but we also saw some some folks that were uh, using it to to do some quizzes for their their team. Um, and a way for this afterwards to generate. A and this diploma was generated through using a bunch of other APIs in the middle. Uh, the PDF was then sent by email. Um, and so certainly, once you think about this, it's like, okay, I can use Typeform for people to do self-evaluation, uh, but I want to give them a diploma. I want to make sure it has their name on it. I want to have it delivered by email. Um, and this, then you're playing with a giant puzzle and you want to connect all the stuff. This is where Things are getting excited. Um, That's really cool. Um, 
We have a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, Victor Hugo Morales Medrano asks um, if in the future uh, you'd be able to complete a type form in the body of an email. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, right now, I know this is one of the limitations we have because if you look at how email work, uh, it's quite an old technology uh, and and it's pretty static. Like whatever you send in the body of an email, it's static. Whereas our whole experience relies on something that's very dynamic, uh, one question at a time type of experience. But um, we don't have anything right now about this. We, I think there's some stuff in the pipe that will let you embed other types of question than just the rating scale question into the email. Um, but eventually there's some other stuff that could happen. If you look at how uh, Google is using uh, AMP, the new AMP technology, how they use it for uh, commenting, how they use it for uh, like when you're collaborating on a, the Google Doc on a slide stuff. Uh, this is like the avenues you can explore. Um, so the future is very open. Really cool. Uh, I'm excited to see what comes out and what we can present. And hopefully one day in the future, we'd be able to pull that off. Um, there is a comment from Christian Marion. You just made my day. Gave me a lot of ideas for Reyes. Thanks, uh, poor Christian's partner. Uh, that's going to be an, a trick. No, I'll, I'll tell you some other stuff we saw with uh, with video ask, for example. Um, we saw a lot of people using video ask because we couldn't get together to celebrate birthdays. So what they did is they created a video ask, sent it to all their friends. It's like, oh, for Ben's birthday, please record your small video. Uh, and we assemble it at the end, it will make a, a big, gigantic video of all of us, uh, like if we were all together in, in person. So uh, there's different they make usage for those things. Amazing. I know you always take up some of the more interesting um, use cases. If there's any developers out there listening to this, getting some crazy ideas, um, and they built a Typeform setup, what do they do? Do they get in touch with you? How? Uh, how, how do we, uh, yeah, solve that? Yeah. So um, as I say, if you want to get started, go on developer.typeform.com. If you have some crazy ideas and you feel that you're limited, come reach out to me either on Twitter or, or by, by email. Uh, we have some Typeforms that are hanging also on the website uh, where you can reach out. And we want to hear your crazy ideas. Uh, we want to hear the stories that you've built and how the technology, how the APIs help you uh, achieve those goals as well. Um, and if you're more, this is working for independent developer, uh, that works also for agencies. So if you are uh, having uh, dealing with clients and you're looking to automate things uh, for your clients through the, the APIs, uh, and that also works for partners. If you're interested to uh, work together to offer a type form integration to your clients, uh, let's talk. Uh, we, we have a lot of things that we want to share with you. Amazing. Nico, do you uh, have any last things to say? Um, I will say, don't be afraid. Uh, in, because I had mentioned developers, but if you're not a developer, this is still achievable using some of the no-code solution. And uh, I guarantee you'll have some fun uh, hacking things together. So much. And thanks for all the inspiration. I definitely uh, figured out that I need to up my present game. Um, because I don't go anywhere near that standard, but um, I think it's it's really healthy to see all this exploration and all the hacking that you do. I can only urge everyone to uh, join the developer forum um, and make sure that you reach out to Nico. He's always present on Twitter, and if you follow him, you can you can check his profile in the event software. Follow him. Uh, he always. Um, post some of the really cool setups that we come across. Um, but Nico, thank you so much for your time. We're going to uh, hop over to talk to community builders. Um, the next session is all about community and a big part of the notion of meaningful is to come together and create something together. And we have um, a lot of really strong females who have all in some way, shape or form managed to establish a very, very meaningful community from addressing the gender pay gap to trying to 
remove some of the polarization that has come um, to be um, due to causes of political beliefs. Um, here are some really, really strong women who are trying to bring people together. Um, so stay tuned. In a couple of minutes, we will um, start that session. Um, thanks again for tuning in. We will be right back.